fellow saints of Zion Lutheran Church, here is your preparation for Sunday. This Sunday, October 25th, we are observing the Feast of the Reformation, 498 years, October 31st, 1517. Luther, Dr. Martin Luther, you know, of Wittenberg, Germany, nails 95 theses on the Wittenberg Castle Church doors. Now everyone thinks, oh, this was a, mo a huge event. You know, he's, he's starting this revolution. No, nah, that's just where you would post stuff at his time. He wanted to debate some topics, meaning some things that were going on, indulgences, um, purgatory, the Pope, a, a, lot of, a lot of different topics to uh, discuss. And he wrote these theses, 95 of them. And he wrote them in Latin, so they weren't in German, so he didn't want the common folk to be walking around talking about this. He wanted the academics to discuss it. But what's interesting, of course, is what he wrote. He brought up in that first thesis, which is probably the best one, it was almost the only one worth reading, is that the Christian life is one of repentance. When we read the Augsburg Confession, which was uh, confessed in 1530, so 13 years later almost, um, says that repentance is contrition or guilt over sin and faith in the forgiveness of sins. So the Christian life isn't one of what you're purchasing or you're doing, but is in relying on Christ for your salvation. Now, I don't know if that's exactly what Luther had in mind when he said repentance, but when you read some of the writings he had at that time, this is where he's getting at. Is he slowly coming out of that Roman Catholic penance and old medieval system into what we confess today in the Book of Concord. And it's beautiful stuff. And the Reformation just blew up from there, you know. Three years later, Luther's on trial in Varms and is outlawed. He's excommunicated. And what does he do with his time in the Wartburg Castle when he's hiding out for a few weeks, about 12, 13 weeks? He translates the New Testament. I can't even read the whole New Testament in like a year. And that dude translates it from Greek into German. <laughs> in a few months. It's amazing. But it's because it's important. And what was important is the question. And that's one of our readings. Our first reading is from Revelation 14. Why read Revelation? Uh, Revelation of St. John for Reformation? Because it says that the angel brought an eternal, actually the eternal gospel. Not a temporary gospel or a conditional gospel or a restricted one. It's an eternal gospel, eternal good news. It's not the work you do, but the work that Christ did on the cross that saves you. That's our first reading. That gets us going. It's like, oh yes, the eternal gospel. And then you get into Romans 3, that it's faith apart from works of the law that justifies us. You know, it's faith or trusting in Jesus alone that saves. Meaning Jesus alone saves us, not our works. And that's how we are justified. Justified meaning how we are declared right with the Father. How we are now children of our Heavenly Father is by what Jesus did. And that gets us to the Gospel lesson, John 8, 31 through 36. If the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. And now you are not slaves. You're not compelled and forced to love your neighbor. You're not compelled and forced to believe in God. You are set free by Jesus. And what do free children do? We hear him, we listen to him, and we follow him. That's what we do. Because he's done all the work. On our own, as it says in Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But we're justified freely, without any charge, by his grace. In the redemption of Jesus the Christ. Isn't that glorious? That's the eternal gospel, the message of the Reformation Church that still abides today whenever we preach that. And our sermon hymn is going to be that great triumphant uh, Reformation hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. We stand and sing that because God is our mighty fortress. Luther writing that hymn based on Psalm 46. So I would encourage you to meditate on Psalm 46 before you come to church on Sunday. Meditate on Revelation 14, 6 through 7. Meditate on Romans 3, 20 through 28. 
or 19 through 28, and meditate on John 8, 31 through 36. If you have a hymnal at home, look at some of our hymns we're going to sing, A Mighty Fortress, hymn 656, God's Own Child, I Gladly Say, because we're having a baptism at the late service, hymn 594. Um, hymn 562, All Mankind Fell in Adam's Fall, which is the only hymn quoted in the Book of Concord. It's quoted in the Formula of Concord, which was in the late 1570s. I'd encourage you to look at those hymns, look at those readings, and remember, and be comforted by this, that what you hear on Sunday is the eternal gospel, the eternal good news that you are Christ. You are justified freely by Christ. No charge to you because he paid the bill in full on the cross and was raised on that third day. Justified. You're forgiven. You're saved. Come and hear it on Sunday. Eat, drink, and be satisfied in the sacrament of the altar. Hear the blessed words of absolution and be at peace. Come, let's celebrate the Reformation together. God bless you all, and we'll see you Sunday.